patrons the opportunity to view and discuss both current and classic motion pictures. Joining me today on Library Life to discuss his library program and book, Warren William, Magnificent Scoundrel of Precode Hollywood, is author John Stanglin. Welcome. Good morning. A friend who is also movie obsessed handed me a tape of three movies and said, you should watch these. Right. They were three Warren William movies, Employee's Entrance, Skyscraper Souls, and The Mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. And I put these movies in and I watched them. And number one, I couldn't believe I'd never seen him. Before. Now let's talk a little bit about Pre-Code Hollywood and mm -hmm. just kind of you know, delve into that for a second. What, what was that all about? You know, as long as there have been Hollywood movies, there's been censorship. Um, in the beginning, there were uh, movements, local movements generally in state and city governments to censor films back in the teens and the early 20s. Um, there became a national effort in the early 20s and by 1930 uh, they created what they call the production code. But the strange thing was it was created and administered by the studios. Mm -hmm. So there was nobody to punish them if they transgressed the code, <laughs> which they did frequently. Um, so the period from about 1930 to the summer of 1934 was a relatively open period where studios could kind of delve into the underside, uh, the seamy side of American life. Mm -hmm. So you saw a lot of stories about infidelity, prostitution, um, crime, gambling, um, all, all different kinds of aspects of American life. And in 1934, the Catholic Church um, sort of raised the specter of a boycott right. and uh, as a result that was the point at which the studios became more serious about controlling content and we got kind of the style of Hollywood that we perceive today from that period you know Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland putting on a show in the backyard and yes. et cetera, et cetera. but for that four-year period um, it was pretty wide open and I think a lot of people would be surprised by the content of those films. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, it was. I didn't want to embarrass her. What did she want? Same thing, money. Dave, did you speak about a divorce again? Yes, I did. I practically got down on my knees to her. But uh, same old story, she's a disappointed, vindictive woman. Sarah, I've got a hunch. We're on the right track. I knew you'd do it. Wait a minute, I haven't put it over yet. But you will. Your hunches never fail. That's what I wanted to hear. Damn it, you're going to have to help me. Oh, Lynn, dear. Just a minute now. Oh, then we'll get it. Now, oh, there you are. There you are. Goodness. Damn it. Harding, Lynn Harding. You're Miss Dennis' secretary? Yes, sir. I'm Mr. Dwight. Yes, I know, sir. Well, let's make it a tete and tete, huh? Tete and You know, sir. Fine. We'll be awfully silly. Oh, well. <laughs> let's be silly, huh? I didn't say silly. I didn't say silly. Well, what did you say? I said <laughs> I said Isn't that funny? I can't say it. <laughs> Can you say it, Mr. Black? New York. Now, this movie, Skyscraper Souls, um, what's interesting about it is the man, he, his goal is to acquire the building, and he calls it to, to make the building or build the building, even creating the building. But the building's already there. What he's doing is he's topping it off and finishing it up. He's selling it. It was there. It's abandoned. It's a big, useless structure that people are afraid to go into. This Alaska plate will make as much as Manhattan Sea Coast. I am not interested. Why? I don't trust you. How many millions do I have to make for you before I gain your confidence? Hamilton, I have got what I want. I own this building now. It's mine. Mm. Seem kind of crazy about it. Why wouldn't I be? They laughed at me when I said I wanted a hundred-story building. They said it wouldn't hold together. But I had the courage and the vision, and it's mine and I own it. It goes halfway to hell. And right up to heaven, and it's beautiful. I'll admit it's an achievement. You bet it is. I've achieved something big, something worthwhile. Feel it under. It's solid. Even the fiercest storm can't budge it. It bends, but it won't break, and it stands here defiant. Hamilton, did you ever stop to think? A million men sweated to build it. Mines, quarries, factories, forests. Men give their lives to it. 
I'd hate to tell you how many men dropped off these girders while they were going up, but it was worth it. Nothing's created without pain and suffering. The child that's born, the cause that's won, the building that's built. Say, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Sounds kind of crazy to me. Well, that's the difference between a man who makes money for the sake of having money <laughs> and a man like me. <laughs> you crook. And when he talks about, do you know how many men died building this? And then he speaks about the men falling off the gutters because the only work that was done that was dangerous about it was the gutter work. Just topping it off, basically, right? come to congratulate you. Thank you. Brewster couldn't get here. He sent his regrets publicly. That's the man you accused of holding out on his associates. He did his best to save your building for you. Poor old Brewster. I'm sorry. You're responsible for that man's death. Nonsense. For the grace of God and my own sense of self-preservation, that might have been a picture of David Dwight. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the picture of a man who had loyalty, who believed in friendship. Can't use friendship for margin, Churchill. Business is business. You had me in the same boat, but I was just one jump ahead of you, that's all. It wasn't your friendship, nor yours, nor yours either, Charlie, that pulled me through, but my own guts! Coupled, of course, with brains. You two-faced, lying, double-crosser. Listen, if I double-crossed somebody else for you, I wouldn't be a double-crosser. I'd be a financial genius. You'd profit by it. You'd love it. You'd love me. I'd be your pal, your leader. But I put one over on you, so I'm a double-crosser. It's all in the point of view, gentlemen. But don't despair. There's lots of small fry that you can double cross. Just like the good old days, before you got out of your class. We'll get you for this, Dwight. I'll get you if it's the last thing I do. 
Meet my former associate, Mr. Hamilton. He'll tell you how we did it. A good man to tie in with. Good day, gentlemen. David! Well? You can call it jealousy, hurt pride, ingratitude, anything you like. But you can't have this child. You've got to give her up. And if I don't? I'll kill you. Oh, kill me? Yes, I will. Oh, Sarah. In a month, you'll be laughing Am at me. Yes, sir. Don't mention it to anyone. It, uh, it isn't serious. Yes, sir. Oh, my darling. <laughs> Silly girl. To think anyone could ever really take your place with me. Oh, I was cruel, wasn't I? But you know, you shouldn't have posed. Oh, why doesn't that fool doctor hurry? The doctor, Sarah. There are dozens in the building. <laughs> building. Oh, it's a great building. It's mine. I own it. It's a beautiful building. Beautiful. And um, this is how the controllers gained possession of the structures. It wasn't like they just walked in and declared that it was theirs because you'd have squabbles and disputes. It was more of a civilized process and very complex and complicated, like it is today, but probably even more so back then because if you think bureaucracy is bad now, in, let's say in the United States, if you think bureaucracy is bad, go to Europe, <laughs> where bureaucracy is alive and well and kicking in a, a form that we have forgotten existed. And then, if you want to see bureaucracy even worse, you go to Europe and you go back in time, and it gets to be utterly ridiculous, or to use a bovine term, utterly ridiculous. Um, I think the Prussians had it at the all-time high level. If you don't know the Prussians, that's European history. It's neither here nor there in this. Look, um, they have, they made movies of them making the skyscrapers by putting the beams together. But you notice when they show this stuff, it's always extremely high up. They're just topping off the buildings. It's like all the other stuff. Since they can't do ye old ladder lean on this. No, nothing's been built, considering all this is supposed to be built at this period, a little bit earlier. Everything's already completed. You have a humongous city. Beauty and beautiful Italian architecture. And I don't see one building being built, just palaces. And that's the entire of Moscow. Panoramic. Quite something. Hmm. I don't see anything being built though. Not one building, not one scaffold, maybe a ladder there. Uh, could have a tile come off. And these, you know, big Greco Romano structures. Look at the size of these aerials. So, all the way around. One humongous panoramic of Moscow. And its palaces, and its antiquitech. There's a few ladders there. There? There and there, there's three ladders going to the roofs. Oh. Oh, that's something. That's the fourth ladder I've seen. No people. Very sinister. We've got a ladder there. We have a ladder there. And we have a ladder there to the roofs. Any more ladders? Why just ladders going up to the roofs? Yes, there. Oh, shit. What's going on? Hang on a minute. One ladder there going up to the roof. A ladder there going up to the roof. A ladder there going up to the roof and a ladder there going up to the roof. Did they have a windy night the night before, guys, and they had some tiles they needed to replace? Why is there ladders going up to all the roofs? Hmm. That's fucking sinister. Excuse my French. Anyway, so that's pretty shit. Oh, let's have a This is a video I found. It's a documentary. It's one of the oldest ones of how they built the skyscrapers in New York City. They simply show 
them putting beams together and look at the haphazard way they're doing it. It's not, this is not like indicative of, of, uh, professional work that was done. Um, to me, it seems like there are too many people that's not being done in the right, uh, way, safe way. It's ridiculous if you look at it, I think. Now, um, if you noticed in the movie, he, he, um, the, the movie Skyscraper Souls, you know, he, he had to create, the whole theme of it is he had to create pain and suffering for it to have been made. Well, because it had to be that way. Now, keep in mind, the stonemasons, the Freemasons, uh, traditionally would sacrifice maybe a human, but an animal and put blood, mix blood in with the mortar or the cement. You've heard about the mafia doing that. Uh, it's part of like their superstitions and magic and whatever crap of their rituals that have that. And there's, uh, typically some stain, uh, on the cornerstone of the threshold of, uh, main entrance of these, uh, old Masonic buildings and things like that. Um, and so that was kind of the theme. Like he double crossed a bunch of people in order to have the building. And, um, you know, so. What you're seeing now here, they're, they're staging a fight because see, they're play acting and pretending they're goofball actors. They're not construction workers. I think, I think they're just having to show like they are building the building and they're just trying to make it into, we got to, we have to make some propaganda movie about how we're building the building. And they thought, well, that would be too boring or whatever. You know, I, I'm just speculating here, but, uh, if you notice in the background of all these shots and in the, fictional movies there's huge tall buildings everywhere and i don't know enough about historical new york city to look at those window shots of the movie skyscraper souls when they're looking out the window and see if it's matching up with what was supposed to have been there at the time of course it's probably a stage set anyway however were they uh depicting what was there or what would have been there it seems like they're depicting themselves as being much higher than they were supposed to have been at that time and 100 stories i think is maybe higher than what they had, but it's not completely, completely out of the question, I think. So with what happened with the Notre Dame Cathedral burning, these buildings, you just don't see the really neat old style buildings like cathedrals being built these days. It's, but they're being taken down. So, uh, that, tells you here we have more people than ever we have more technology than ever we have more energy available than ever yet um to build to repair even to maintain the buildings that we have uh is near impossible and i think even with notre dame they may have kind of allowed or staged this event a little bit just to allow that to happen because it's easier for them to just kind of start over and do it how they think they could do it in order to uh, accomplish the project, um, collect insurance, and then it's more affordable to be able to do it that way. But um, they just don't have the techniques, the skill, the craftsmanship. They'll have to do things differently in order to build the same space the same way. So, um, but yeah, if you heard the guy in the Skyscraper Souls movie that uh, he said it, it, the building's foundations go halfway to hell and, and they reach nearly to heaven. The foundations of these buildings, they go all the way down to the bedrock and there are floors and, and windows and things like that. Um, so there's a, an air of secrets and mystery surrounding these things that we're unsolving, we're uncovering. And it's a race against time, it's an absolute race against time. I think we're, we're ahead of wherever. Uh, they thought we would be on these subjects and they haven't been able to destroy the buildings fast enough. Of course, with the digital age, um, we can document them, of course, much faster than they would be able to destroy them. So we just have to keep at it and keep solving the mysteries and finding out more about it before the waters get muddied and that type of thing, you know, no pun intended. So, um, I've noticed in these old propaganda movies, like the ones where they're doing the fake interviews of the fake old people who were supposedly born around 1850 and they're interviewing them in 1929. So they're about 80 years old, supposedly, and or more or less, right? Supposed to be older than that, right? 
but they were they kept the one guy in New York City he mentioned about how there were all kinds of tall buildings and how they were occupied and utilized doing all sorts of commerce and it just was such of a contrived statement and he's closing his eyes when he's saying it uh that turned on my spidey sense and my radar I'm really onto this one I'm going to keep looking at New York I think the um I think the uh flat <clears throat> the flat iron building is a curious case. Now, I have some pictures of them building the Woolworth building um, that I need to look at carefully uh, to see what's going on there. Um, I also have some other things of similar constructions, famous buildings, and I need to see if they are just merely reassembling some of these after having moved them, or if they are indeed constructing them de novo for, for the first time. But if you um, go back and replay this video and listen to him when he's talking about what it takes to build the buildings, the millions of men, or rather millions of man hours is what it really should be, just to construct one behemoth massive building like that. It truly does take a tremendous effort. And I think the Burj Khalifa is a good example of one built in our lifetime that is not everything it seems to be. And uh, it took basically tens of thousands of <laughs> for lack of a better term, slaves to build it, and the number of people who died constructing that using today's technology and safety equipment and everything. Well, they didn't use it probably, but it's astounding. You know, hundreds, maybe thousands of men and probably a few women died building that uh, Burj Khalifa, but they don't uh, report that very well. So, okay, you can see this is just a complete farce. It was how it's supposed to be like... There you go. I mean, that tells you everything you know. Uh, but still lots of questions, but we're going to keep digging into it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.